This is the ultimate 5G versus LTE speed test on Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile on the new iPhone 12. To do this test, I ran speed tests in 10 different locations across three different cities, Longmont, Boulder, and Denver. I ran three tests on 5G, then three tests on LTE, got the average, and then compared the results. I think this is interesting stuff, and I think you'll find the results surprising. You can find the exact coordinates I ran each of the speed tests linked in the video description, along with links to the current 5G coverage maps available from Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. So with that said, is 5G faster than LTE? Let's find out. First off, I started my testing in Longmont, Colorado. Why? Because I live here, and because according to the coverage maps, Longmont is blanketed with 5G coverage from Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. My first stop was the DMV, because of course, you want good performance when you're waiting in line there. This location also happened to be next to a cell tower, so I was hoping for fast speeds. Verizon and T-Mobile did connect to the 5G networks, but surprisingly, AT&T did not. My phone displayed 5GE in the status bar, which may look like 5G, but it actually stands for 5G Evolution, and it's part of AT&T's LTE network. I'm upset with AT&T's confusing branding too, but it is what it is. I ran three tests on each of the networks, and here are the results. Verizon averaged 13.6 megabits per second down and 18.9 up, while T-Mobile had faster speeds and averaged 37.4 down and 26.5 up. Next, I ran three LTE tests on the three networks, and I found the results flipped. This time, Verizon was fastest, averaging 63.7 down and 39.5 up. AT&T in second place, getting 42.1 down and 20.8 up, and T-Mobile was in last, getting a measly 1.1 down and 0.7 up. Let's compare the final results. You can see with Verizon, 5G had a negative impact. Download speeds were 78% slower, and upload speeds were 52% slower. With T-Mobile, on the other hand, 5G actually had measurable improvements, resulting in over a 3,000% increase in both download and upload speeds. For location two, I went to my local UPS store. Interesting, I noticed antenna bands positioned on the rooftop of a neighboring building. All networks claim to offer 5G coverage here, but I continued to only get 5G signal on my Verizon and T-Mobile phones. The 5G speeds were reasonable. Verizon averaged 71 down and 26 up, while T-Mobile got 31.2 down and 14.7 up. When I switched over to LTE, there was actually a noticeable improvement in the speeds on Verizon and T-Mobile. And AT&T actually had the fastest download speeds here, averaging an impressive 194.7 down. Verizon was in a close second here, and T-Mobile happened to be the slowest in this location. Comparing the final results from location two, and you can see LTE continues to be faster. The 5G speeds were slower on Verizon and T-Mobile, with the only exception being Verizon's 5G upload speeds. But at only three megabits per second faster, it wasn't much of a difference. For location three, I went to Macintosh Lake. I thought this would be a more remote area to test away from Main Street, but all three networks still advertised 5G coverage here. However, like before, only Verizon and T-Mobile connected. AT&T, what's up? Where are you at? Verizon continued to offer the faster 5G performance here, averaging 60.5 down and 2.7 up, while T-Mobile averaged 20.5 down and 9.2 up. Switching over to LTE, and AT&T continues to dominate. It finished first with an average of 192.3 down and 9.7 up. Verizon had the second fastest speeds here and T-Mobile averaged the slowest speeds. But the real question, how do these compare with 5G? Looking at the results side by side, and you can see 5G had a measurable improvement in the upload speeds on Verizon and T-Mobile, but funny enough, neither 5G network could even come close to the LTE speeds I was pulling on AT&T. And that was the trend in Longmont. 5G on Verizon and T-Mobile tended to have slower download speeds, but slightly faster upload speeds. And despite the misleading branding, AT&T 5GE actually tended to be the fastest. 
let's head into Boulder and see if this trend continues. My first stop in Boulder was Valmont City Park. Here, Verizon and AT&T offered 5G coverage, albeit with AT&T being right on the edge here, and unfortunately, T-Mobile did not offer 5G coverage in this location. However, when I went to run the 5G speed tests, I was actually unable to connect to any of the 5G networks. Instead, I just did an LTE speed test here on all the phones. AT&T continued to dominate with their 5G E network, averaging 143.3 down and 38.9 up. For my next spot, I went more in the middle of town. I figured having 5G coverage at an Apple store would make sense because it's one of the first locations a customer is likely to try and experience the 5G network. Surprisingly, only Verizon offered 5G coverage here, and for me, it was actually somewhat unreliable. You can see here, just as my phone finishes a 5G speed test, it immediately switches back to LTE. Signal strength seemed good on both 5G and LTE, so I'm surprised it dropped the 5G connection, especially since my settings were set to have 5G on. Regardless, I was able to run three tests and Verizon averaged 57 down and 20.7 up. Switching over to LTE and the results continued to trend in the direction we observed previously. AT&T absolutely dominated here with some of the fastest speeds yet. Verizon was in second place and T-Mobile in last. Comparing the final results for Verizon and it's what we've come to expect. Download speeds were about the same, coming in at just 4% slower, and upload speeds got a decent boost in improvement by 52%. My final location in Boulder was the Chautauqua Trailhead. I thought this was more outside the city and would be a good test. Verizon and AT&T were the only ones to offer 5G here, but as per usual, the AT&T 5G network was missing in action, so I only conducted the test on Verizon 5G. It averaged 4.9 down and 6.5 up. Next, I ran the LTE speed tests. AT&T finished first here, but this time T-Mobile was in second place and Verizon came in last. Comparing the side-by-side -side results, and really not much to say here besides that the trend continues. Verizon 5G had slower download speeds and minimally faster upload speeds. What we've learned so far from Longmont and Boulder is that first, AT&T's 5G coverage map is abhorrently wrong, or there's something wrong with my SIM card or my phone or something like that. And second, Verizon and T-Mobile's low band 5G tends to offer slower download speeds, but slightly faster upload speeds. Now let's head all the way into Denver and see what the performance is like there. My first stop in Denver was the Berkeley Lake Park. This seemed a reasonable distance outside the city, offered free parking, and a good environment for doing some speed tests. Checking the coverage maps, and it looks like all three networks should offer 5G coverage here, but surprisingly, my Verizon phone didn't connect. What was also interesting is for the first time ever, my AT&T phone connected to a proper AT&T 5G network. I was excited to try this out and see how the results would fare. On its first 5G speed test, AT&T averaged 189 down and 23.4 up. T-Mobile averaged 76.7 down and 51.7 up. Next, I ran the LTE tests. No surprise, AT&T crushed it and finished first. Verizon came in second and T-Mobile continued to trail behind in last place. Poor T-Mobile, you need some help, you need a boost. You need a speed boost, you need like a Mario Kart mushroom or something. You gotta go faster, I believe in you. In, in like maybe five to six years, you'll get there. What's interesting is comparing the final results here and we can begin to see how AT&T's 5G network compares with their LTE network. And well, it, it uh, wasn't good. 5G speeds on AT&T were 23% slower on the download and 41% slower on the upload. This means AT&T's stupid 5G E network is actually faster than their legitimate 5G network. Let's go to the next spot and see if this trend continues. Next, I went to Sloan Lake Park, another spot reasonably outside the city with great fresh air and free parking. Here, I was surprised to see Verizon had actually deployed their millimeter wave 5G network, and AT&T and T-Mobile also offered 5G coverage here as well. This was the first spot all networks had 5G coverage at once, 
so we could put them side by side by side. Verizon's millimeter wave 5G network absolutely dominated. It averaged 531 down and 55.5 up. T-Mobile finished second this time with average speeds of 40.9 down and 48.1 up, while AT&T was in last with speeds of 39.9 down and 22.1 up. Jumping over to the LTE speed tests and the results flipped around. Verizon still finished first here with speeds of 83.9 down and 26.8 up, but this time AT&T finished in second place and T-Mobile found itself in its usual last place spot. Now onto the interesting part, comparing the 5G versus LTE speeds. With Verizon's millimeter wave 5G network, we finally saw a tremendous improvement in both speeds and performance. Verizon's millimeter wave network boasted 533% faster download speeds and 107% faster upload speeds. AT&T's 5G network, meanwhile, continued to disappoint, offering 37% slower download speeds and 23% slower upload speeds. And with T-Mobile, it's what we've come to expect. Download speeds were slower, but upload speeds got a decent 53% improvement. Next, I went to one of the hearts of Denver, the Union train station. I picked this spot for its central location and because I knew it was next to a Verizon millimeter wave 5G node. Just in case I didn't find millimeter wave elsewhere, I did want to make sure I got at least one spot that had it. AT&T and T-Mobile also offered 5G coverage here as well. For the second ever side-by-side-by-side -side -side test, we had results that were very familiar. Verizon, of course, finished first with average speeds of 431 down and 106.7 up. AT&T in second, getting 55.8 down and 21.6 up. And T-Mobile comfortably in last with speeds of 13.9 down and 21.3 up. Next, I ran the LTE tests. This time, AT&T finished first, getting 79 down and 32.4 up while Verizon finished in second and T-Mobile in last. Comparing the final results here, and things are actually somewhat surprising. Per usual, Verizon Millimeter Wave did boast huge improvements, scoring over 900% faster speeds on the download and over 330% faster speeds on the upload. AT&T 5G continued to lose to its 5G-E counterpart, getting about 30% slower speeds across the board. And what's surprising, is T-Mobile's 5G network actually saw improvements compared to its LTE network. 5G speeds were 46% faster on the download and 40% faster on the upload. But the speeds also only went from 9.5 down to 13.9 down and 15.3 up to 21.3 up. So not exactly a huge leap in performance in my opinion. And now for the 10th location, I went to the Denver Central Market. I figured this would be another more central location and a good spot to test out. Here, all three networks did advertise having 5G coverage, but for some reason, I wasn't able to connect on Verizon. I ran the tests on AT&T and T-Mobile, and I was surprised just how slow these data speeds were. Like, what? AT&T, you're throwing a 5G icon in my status bar and giving me 1.8 down and 1.3 up? That is crazy to me. T-Mobile actually did better here. Next, I did the LTE speed tests. Here, T-Mobile finished first. AT&T actually squeaked in second place and Verizon was in last. Looking at the final results and it basically solidifies the trend. AT&T 5G had slower download speeds but faster upload speeds while T-Mobile 5G had slower download speeds and upload speeds in this particular location. Okay, I actually have a secret 11th testing site for you. I didn't record it because my hands were freezing and my camera was put away, but I did screenshot the results and they're pretty awesome. Let's take a look. While walking back to my car, I stopped at the corner of Larimer and 17th Street, and surprisingly, Verizon actually had millimeter wave deployed. So of course, I had to whip my phones out and run some tests, and Verizon crushed it, peaking at 826 down and averaging 589 down. But what was more surprising to me was the LTE speed test results. Here, Verizon had some of the fastest speeds I've ever tested on their LTE network, averaging an impressive 354.3 down. This even beat out AT&T's 5GE network, which still had amazingly fast speeds of 289.7 down and 45 up. Oh, and uh, yeah, T-Mobile was here too. Where does this leave us? 
Is 5G faster than LTE? Well, for my testing, I would say no. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile's current deployments of low-band 5G, which is what is most readily available and what you're most likely to connect to, offered measurably slower data speeds in comparison to LTE. Of the 20 tests that actually connected to a 5G network, 15 of those were slower than what I was getting on LTE. So why is this? Why is LTE faster than 5G? To answer this, I reached out to my friends on Twitter and I got an excellent answer from Sneed Mobile Tech. Sneed says it's simple, channel bandwidth. Look no further than that. Low band 5G channels are typically five to 15 megahertz and can only aggregate one other channel. LTE aggregations can be two to six additional channels, which adds much more bandwidth potential. This means for low band 5G, you can connect to two channels at once and get about 20 megahertz of total bandwidth. Meanwhile, on LTE, you can connect between two to six channels simultaneously for between 50 to 70 megahertz of total bandwidth. The more bandwidth you have, the higher your data speeds, and right now, LTE is able to deliver. For more information on network performance and technologies, be sure to head over to the Sneed Mobile Tech YouTube channel and become part of the SMT Nation. They've got some really fun live streams and some great information over there. I've been enjoying it and I suggest you check it out. So do you need a 5G phone at the end of 2020 and heading into 2021? I would say no, save your money and get a great LTE phone instead. You can find an iPhone 11 Pro, Pixel 4, or Galaxy S10 going for just $650, $300, and $400 respectively on Swappa. Those are great prices on great phones that are gonna get you excellent LTE performance. Now, if you're someone who upgrades every three to four years, then yes, it may make sense to get a 5G phone to sort of future-proof yourself, but the truth is 5G modems are advancing so rapidly right now that even within the next one to two years, the modems are gonna have better performance, better battery life, and better efficiency. So really, in my mind, I think it's worth it to pick up an LTE device today, and then in maybe one to two years, get a 5G phone, when hopefully the 5G networks are also more built out and you can actually enjoy faster 5G speeds. Either way, that's gonna be it for this video. I put a ton of time and energy into it and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, clicking the like button would be tremendous. Also, be sure to share this with someone who's curious about 5G versus LTE speed performance on the new iPhone 12. I'm Stetson. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.